Question 3. Nitrogen is generally unreactive molecules, but it does react under certain conditions. Part A. Give two reasons to explain the lack of reactivities of nitrogen. So this is a very common question that asked um, for the nitrogen's uh, related uh, question. Uh, so first, uh, it has a strong t uh, triple bond. So we know that uh, between nitrogen's atom, there are uh, three bondings there, three covalent bonds. And this triple bond is uh, extremely strong and it needs um, a large amount of energy to break it. So means it's hard to break the bonding and it will not uh, easily react because the energies that require to uh, break this bond is, uh, is large. So this is very easy to understand. And another one uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, or relatively uh, difficult to understand is this non-polar molecules. Uh, I give you uh, one example. Uh, let's say now we have uh, two molecules. Uh, one is the methane and another one is a coral methane. If let's say we put these uh, methane with hydroxide. So the hydroxide will not really react with this methane. So it will form nothing, nothing to form. So because for the uh, methane, uh, it's a non-polar molecules. So when it's non-polar, then it's not that reactive. So let's compare with the coral methane. If we put the hydroxide with the coral methane. So because in this coral methane, the CCL bond is a polar bond and it has the partial positive and negative charge there. So the hydroxide will attack or will react with this uh, carbon with the partial positive charge and it will form uh, other compounds. And this is the reactivity about. Means, if the molecule is non-polar, it's relatively non-reactive. If the molecule is polar, like this, so it's more reactive. So that's the meaning. Part B. Nitrogen can react with oxygen uh, in an internal combustion engine to form the NO and NO2. So there are three reactions here. So the first one is the oxidation of the nitrogen's molecule to form the two oxides. Second reaction is the nitrogen dioxide reacts with water to form uh, products. Um, this one is uh, the one of the step in the Oswald process. So when the nitrogen reacts with water, Oh, sorry, nitrogen dioxide reacts with water, it will form two products. So when they say two products, means uh, it's the, this uh, HNO3 and HNO2. So the nitric acid and nitrous acid. So this one um, uh, is the os one of the steps in Oswald process again. Uh, okay. So now, reaction three. Um, the same uh, oxide, the nitrogen dioxide, reacts with the hydrocarbon. So the unburned hydrocarbon. So it will form this uh, peroxyacetyl nitrate. Uh, short form is the uh, PAN. So this is the compound that form from this reaction. So this one is the processed, means uh, when the reactants react and form these products. So it's different from the environment uh, consequence. The environment consequence is because of this compound. After this compound form, uh, what is the environment consequence? Uh, so you have to uh, uh, make a difference. Uh, you have to know the difference between them. Okay, now let's move on to the part one. Write in equations to show the formations of a mixture of NO and NO2 in the reaction one. 
So it's very simple. Uh, first, we already know reactants um, will be the nitrogen molecule and the oxygen. After that, you will form these two oxides. So next step, you just need to balance the oxygen's number. So you need to put uh, 3 over 2 because uh, you need to make sure uh, the both sides, the elements, they are balanced. Right. Okay, part two. This part is actually um, is quite difficult for some candidates, um, but uh, uh, you should know that. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, the the products. These two products will be formed. Right. So for those who uh, know the Oswald process, so these are the two products will form. Um, part three. State one environmental uh, consequence of the uh, reaction three uh, so this is what I told you just now uh, this is the process that form the peroxy acetyl nitrate so this is a compound once the compound form if you give or if you lead to the uh, environment consequence so uh, which we call photochemical smog so this is a environmental consequence because of the chemicals that produce this one. Uh, just for your information, uh, if let's say now uh, the question asks uh, the reactions between the the these uh, NO two uh, water and uh, with the presence of oxygen. So when there are three reactants that involve here, so you form nitric acid. So this nitric acid is the main cause of acid rain. So be because in nature, uh, when we have uh, this uh, NO2 produced, so it reacts with the oxygen and the moisture or the water vapor to form this nitric acid. So this is acid rain about. Part C. The Haber process involved the reactions of the N2 and H2 to form ammonia. Um, the catalyst used uh, is the, this uh, iron uh, and is uh, carried out at the lower temperature and pressure. So this one is the enthalpy, negative 92. Part 1. So the information is uh, provided in the table 3.1. So you need to uh, complete this table 3.1. So there are three compounds here, nitrogens, hydrogens, and ammonia. And now it's asking um, the enthalpy change of formation, delta HF. So for the first two compounds, nitrogens and hydrogen, because they are elements, the formations or the enthalpy change of formations of elements they are all zero so therefore you just put zero here and the formations of ammonia you can get from this equation so because in this equation the delta H already given negative 92 uh, so you have to uh, understand this equation is for the formations of two moles of ammonia so means this enthalpy this negative 92 is to is for the formations of two moles of ammonia so when you need to know or you need to get the formations of one mole of ammonia then you just half it so your answer must be negative 46 means uh, is from this negative 92 over 2 so you get negative 46 because formations is always to form one mole of the compound. Part 2. Explain how the presence of catalyst affects the uh, reaction. Uh, this is very, very simple. Uh, so I try to use this one uh, to explain. So whenever we have a catalyst, uh, so it will lower the Ea. So the... Uh, Activation energy before the catalyst is this one, which is higher. So this is the Ea, the, the Ea without catalyst. If we use catalyst, 
then the catalyst will lower the Ea of the reaction. So this is the Ea with catalyst. So therefore, the reaction is easier to happen. Uh, so why? Uh, because it's a uh, provide alternative pathway means uh, it will give uh, another mechanisms which will have a lower activation energy uh, so again it's very simple catalyst increases the rate by providing alternative pathway or we can call mechanism with a lower activation energy so the reaction is easier to happen now part Three, state and explain uh, the effect, if any, on the rate of the Haber process as the pressure is lowered. Uh, so you have to understand when pressure is lowered, so what is the, the consequence? So uh, let's uh, refer to this uh, diagram. Okay. Let's say now we have this, uh, the before uh, the pressure lowered. And after the pressure get decreased or the pressure get lowered, so we know that when the uh, pressure decreases, so the volume is larger. So when the volume is larger, those reactants they have uh, more volumes, and the chances for them to meet up and react is actually lesser. So that's why the successful collision per time is going to be lower because the volume or the space between them now is larger it's harder for them to meet up and react so that's the that's the effects of the pressure means that when we lower the pressure the rate will be lower so let's go through this statement or this answer the rate of the reaction is lowered so this is the the effects huh? when the pressure is lowered why because the volume is getting larger so when the volume is getting larger then the frequency of the successful collision per unit time is therefore lower means uh, they have a uh, uh, less uh, uh, frequency or less uh, collisions per time means it's harder for them to meet up and react Um, part D, part D. Uh, this question is quite challenging, right? Because it involves the formations of uh, hybridization of the orbitals, and uh, the uh, formations of uh, sigma bonds and pi bonds. Okay, now let's start. Um, part D. The N two F two molecule has double covalent bond. Whenever there is a double covalent bond, so we know that they must share two pair of electrons. That's the double covalent double covalence bond means. And uh, these the uh, double covalent bonds uh, between its uh, nitrogen atom. So means it's telling you this double bond now is between the two nitrogen atom, and it's something like this nitrogen. And nitrogen need to link to uh, or bond to another molecule, uh, which is the fluorines here. So this is how it looks like, right? Now, part one, complete figure 3.2 to show the dot and cross diagram. Uh, dot and cross, then uh, you have to choose uh, which, which uh, is for which atom. Means uh, dot is for, in this uh, diagram, so the dot is for the fluorine and the cross is for the nitrogen right uh, before you start to uh, draw this diagram uh, it's better for you to count the total valence electron first so we know that nitrogen is group 15 so uh, it has uh, five valence electron fluorine is group 17 so it has uh, seven valence electron so means it's going to be total 24 electrons in your dot cross diagram. So this is the things that you must make sure uh, after you complete the dot cross diagram. And from just now, 
the question already told you that uh, there are two covalence bonds between the nitrogen. So means uh, these two nitrogens, they're going to share four electrons. So you just put four cross here. And the nitrogens and fluorine, they need to achieve octet configuration. So therefore, the nitrogens and fluorine, now they share one pair of electrons. And the nitrogen itself, it has the lone pair with itself. So the nitrogens now is octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same as this nitrogen. So now nitrogen is a chief octet because now it has a three bonding with others and one lone pair. Fluorine is quite straightforward. So when it share one electron with others, so it can achieve octet like this. So again, once you complete this dot cost diagram, make sure you count the electrons. So it's uh, 24 electrons there. Now part two. Part two is uh, a bit uh, challenging uh, because it's involved hybridization. And the hybridization uh, that is asking is for the nitrogen atom. So for this nitrogen, uh, first, uh, it starts with this one. It has five valence electron. So in the S and P orbital, uh, initially is arranged like this. Because nitrogen need to form three bonding. So it need to undergo hybridization. And you need to know how many sigma bond and how many pi bonds involved. So from here, let's say this diagram. Okay, please look at this diagram. Okay, so this one, um, we know that whenever there is a double bond, uh, it must be one sigma bond and one pi bond. And the bonding between the nitrogens and fluorine is a sigma bond. So means nitrogens need to form two sigma Wait, sorry, two sigma and one pi. So that's for nitrogen. So because nitrogen need to form three bonding, and the two uh, of the three bonding, two bonding is uh, uh, sigma bond, one is the pi bond. After that, we will know what is the hybridization for this uh, nitrogen. So the nitrogen's uh, its hybridization is sp2. So means one s orbital is going to mix with the 2p orbital like this and form these three hybrid orbitals. And one of the hybrid orbitals is has the lone pair. So it means uh, this lone pair, uh, this lone pair. And there will be two unpaired electron in these hybrid orbitals. One of that will use to form sigma bond. One of that will form another sigma bond. So means this sigma bond and this sigma bond. So another unpaired electron will stay in the unhybridized p orbital to form the pi bonding. So means the remaining pi bondings here. So from this, uh, this uh, hybridization, uh, so we know that uh, how many uh, bonding will form. How many sigma bond, how many pi bond. So it's very clear that the hybridization of the nitrogen is sp2. Okay, because the numbers of uh, covalence bond that is formed, right? Uh, I hope you understand this. This is a bit uh, uh, difficult. Okay, part three. Draw a diagram uh, of uh, the pi bond between the nitrogen atom in this uh, N2F2 uh, and describe how it's formed. 
uh, when they ask describe how it's formed then you need to draw before and after formation so pi bond we know that is the sideway overlap between the p orbital uh, so remember just now there is uh, one unpaid electrons in p orbital isn't it so these p orbitals with one one unpaid electron will overlap with another p orbitals with one unpaid electron which means this is okay this is the one nitrogen this is another nitrogen and this dot is actually the nuclei see? the nu nu or nucleus right so and this one is the p orbitals from two different nitrogen uh, so this nitrogen with one and uh, this unhybridized uh, p orbital this nitrogen has another p orbitals so each of these carry one electron and these two orbitals is undergo sideway overlap once they overlap they will form these two electron crowds two electron crowds and these two electron crowds will represent one pi bonds only and of course you must make sure these two electron crowd is uh, above and below the this uh, nucleus or, or nuclei so this is a drawing huh? uh, I hope you understand how it works uh, so this is explanation uh, the pi bonds form when the 2p orbital uh, means this one 2p 2p uh, undergo sideways overlaps and form two crops of electrons above and below the plane so imagine this nucleus these two nucleus is a plane right so it must be above and below the plane uh, okay that's all thank you